in Egypt's deadliest in Sinai on Friday. This is the World Service. Now, Troy Andrews counts the likes of Barack Obama and Will Smith as his admirers. The singer, songwriter and horn player is more prominently known by his stage name, which is Trombone Shorty. He was born and raised in the historic Treme neighbourhood of New Orleans. He began his musical life at the age of six, supervised by some of the most talented musicians his city had to offer. He spoke to this programme during a recent trip to London and discussed, among other things, the impact of Hurricane Katrina, his mentoring of young musicians and the unique sound of his band. If you listen to people uh, that came before me, Louis Armstrong, uh, Fats Domino, may you rest in peace, people that has all that have always uh, moved the music forward. So if you listen to all those, all of those people that we know that made it from the city, none of them are, are traditional New Orleans music. You're looking so good as a dog on shame that they all couldn't be mine. You're looking so pretty as a dog on pity. Oh, you're looking so fine. We have and I'm an I'm a energetic person, so I grew up in New Orleans in the Treme neighborhood where we played a lot of brass band music, street funk. You know, I remember waking up as a kid, going to school, and there was a jazz funeral as I'm walking to school. And then as I'm walking back home, the same band or a different band may be celebrating someone's birthday. So it was a lot of music. And Treme is the oldest black neighborhood in America, and Congo Square is there, and that's where the slaves were able to uh, continue their culture from Africa and continue to do what they did on their homeland. And uh, and I think that has a big influence on our music. You know, everyone in New Orleans has a nickname. I got my name, Trombone Shorty. There's a bunch of pictures of me around where the trombone is actually much taller than me. And uh, I remember my mom just standing on side of me because it looks like I'm going to tilt over because the horn was much heavier and taller than me. So I got the name there from my brother James Andrews and uh, and it stuck with me, you know. It's been with me my whole life and even though I'm taller now, I, I just got to roll with it. I wanted to give the kids an opportunity to learn from some of the city's uh, greatest educators to get them prepared for the rest of the world. Like most of them will probably start playing now and they would never learn any fundamentals. They would just start playing and everything would be completely natural, which is a beautiful thing. But it also hinders you from being able to go on stage and play with a Lenny Kravitz or Zach Brown or so I wanted to start the thing and also I give away instruments to kids in New Orleans and they get to have their own instruments. Personally for me, I, I think that it, it will save some of their lives. The thing about New Orleans is that music is so strong there that it can definitely steer people in a different direction and let their instrument be their passport to see the rest of the world. Even though we're all in one city, we all approach music differently in different neighborhoods. Like uh, before the storm, you get a lot of people that never left their neighborhood for 20, 30, 60 years. They only stayed in that radius. And so they are in influenced by what they make up and what they hear. They didn't hear anything outside of that. And we can tell where they're from. Like the people downtown New Orleans, that's where I'm from, like if we talk about like Mardi Gras Indians and you see them at the second lines, they play the tambourine with their fists closed. And then if you go uptown, you can always tell because they approach it with their fingers open and they just touch the fingertips and they play it like that. So you can hear certain uh, collective playing and different things that can tell you where certain people are from. I was on tour with Lenny Kravitz. I went home for 10 days and in that 10 days it happened, but I was able to escape out of there 
it took us a couple of weeks to be able to replace everybody to get phone calls to know if someone had stayed or where they are and and a lot of people didn't realize that in new orleans um the things that we do there doesn't happen around the world and i think the people of new orleans they really understood that you can't get a street parade in Texas or uh, New York or wherever it may be. You're not gonna find po' boys or shrimp sandwiches or things outside. You're not gonna get the music. And so what I think Katrina did in, 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 in effect to the music is allowed the people of the city, the music lovers to understand what we have is very special and it doesn't exist anywhere else. And I'm pretty sure that the music has brought people back to New Orleans more than anything else. Nice voice, Trombone Shorty speaking to Weekend. And as we end on his tune, Tripped Out Slim, let me say thanks to our guests, Rosamond Irwin and Bruno Gisani. Thanks to you for listening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye bye. vote the BBC African Footballer of the Year 2017 Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, Nabi Keita, Sadio Mane, Victor Moses or Mohamed Salah. Voting ends on Monday the 27th of November at bbc.com slash African football where you will also find full terms and